On my other channel, Mark Felton Productions, I made a video some months ago about the Russian Liberation Army, a Russian organization that was created out of former Soviet prisoners of war held by the Germans, and led by a renegade Soviet general named Andrei Vlazov. But there was another renegade Russian unit, not often spoken about, the Russian SS. Why some Soviet citizens collaborated with the Germans is a complex story, but can be boiled down to several main reasons. Many people in the non-Russian Soviet People's Republics, a good example being Ukraine, initially welcomed the German army as liberators in 1941-42, liberating them from the inhuman policies of Stalin, who had inflicted terrible sufferings and privations on certain nationalities or ethnic groups at different times. These people thought that the Germans would give them a form of independence, an idea they were quickly disabused of as the Germans proved to be just as unpleasant as Stalin and his secret police. But some men, nonetheless, chose to serve Hitler out of an ideological hatred of Soviet communism, and that hatred extended to many Russians as well. The Germans captured about three million Soviet prisoners during the war, and they treated them with homicidal contempt, eventually resulting in the deaths of around two million, mostly due to starvation and disease. When offered the opportunity to serve the Germans, many Soviet POWs volunteered to save themselves from the brutal slave labor system that they found themselves in. The Kaminsky Brigade came into existence in late 1941 as an auxiliary police unit of 200 men, recruited from the Lohot area near Bryansk, captured on the 6th of October 1941. The unit was named for one of its founders, a local engineer named Bronislav Kaminsky, who with his friend, schoolteacher Konstantin Voskoboynik, approached the Germans to offer their assistance in policing the area. The Lahot area was a sort of punishment region established by Stalin for imprisoning people forbidden to return to their homes in large Soviet cities, so Kaminsky and his followers naturally loathed the communists. The 200-man militia was used by the Germans to conduct some terrible atrocities. Basically, Kaminsky used this opportunity to seek out and kill loyal Soviet citizens and anyone associated with the partisans. By January 1942, the unit had grown to 500 men, increased, due to much increased Soviet partisan activities in the German rear areas, to 1,400 men by spring 1942. By mid-March, due to the seriousness of the partisan threat to the lines of communications of the German Army Group Center, the German Second Army made Kaminsky mayor of Army Rear Area 532, headquartered in Lohot. Kaminsky soon enjoyed a great deal of autonomy in running his fiefdom. From June 1942, the Kaminsky Brigade operated in concert with regular German SS and police forces, and took part in a huge anti-partisan operation behind the German lines, killing 1,193 people and sending over 12,500 to concentration camps. By now, the Kaminsky Brigade was over 6,500 strong. Kaminsky's power base continued to expand. He renamed his militia the Russian National Liberation Army, distinct from the Russian Liberation Army under General Vlazov, and in autumn 1942 introduced conscription to swell its ranks, also recruiting ex-Soviet POWs from nearby labor camps. He also gained some new weapons, a couple of Soviet BT-7 tanks and a Soviet 76mm artillery gun. The brigade grew and grew, by January 1943 numbering almost 10,000 men, and now in possession of one KV-2, two T-34, three BT-7 and two BT-5 tanks. Before the Battle of Kursk in 1943, the Kaminsky Brigade conducted anti-partisan operations in the region, and also took part in German reprisal operations against civilians. Kaminsky had a gallows erected outside his headquarters, and bodies were always to be seen hanging from it. It's been estimated that the Kaminsky Brigade killed about 10,000 civilians during this period. Transferred to Vitebsk in Belarus, the brigade again conducted heavy combat operations against the strong Soviet partisan forces in the region. But desertions to the partisans also occurred, resulting in Kaminsky strangling nine of his men to death in front of the others to set an example in one horrific action. 
Casualties in the Kaminsky Brigade were very high, with around 70% killed, wounded or missing. Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler was very pleased with Kaminsky's efforts, awarding him the Iron Cross first and second class on the same day. In March 1944, the unit changed names again, becoming Volksheer Brigada Kaminsky, or People's Army Brigade Kaminsky, and a transfer in April to SS Kampfgruppe von Gottberg, one of the most murderous of Himmler's police units, as it also included the Derlewanger Brigade of murderers, rapists, criminals, and assorted psychos. Kaminsky's unit helped with three murderous operations labelled anti-partisan actions, where villages were burned down and the inhabitants abused and tortured, then shot or sent to slave labour camps, over 20,000 civilians dying in the process. In June 1944, the Kaminsky Brigade was formally absorbed into the Waffen-SS and renamed Waffen-Sturmbrigade R.O.N.A., Kaminsky receiving the rank of SS Brigadeführer. It was envisioned that Kaminsky's unit would form part of a new Russian SS division to enter combat against the Red Army on the Eastern Front. But when the Warsaw Uprising began in August 1944, these seasoned killers helped other SS and auxiliary police units crush the Polish resistance. The Kaminsky Brigade conducted mass private looting during military operations and also raped many women but they also suffered casualties, losing 500 men killed. German forces became disgusted with the Russians' behaviour and decided to remove them from Warsaw. They lost more men killed when attacked by Polish Home Army troops in the forests outside Warsaw, some 250 dying, and also losing their artillery and much of their ill-gained loot as well. Kaminsky and some of his staff were ordered to lodge for a command meeting, but never arrived. What happened to the group is unclear. Either Polish Home Army troops ambushed Kaminsky's vehicles and killed him and his staff, or they were captured alive by the Poles, faced summary court-martial and then were shot, or the Gestapo arrested Kaminsky's group before they arrived at the meeting and liquidated them, as they had become such an embarrassment to the Germans. What was left of the Kaminsky Brigade was absorbed in September 1944 into the Russian Liberation Army, forming one of General Vlazov's infantry regiments. Those that survived the war met varying fates. Some were handed over by the British and Americans to the Soviets. For decades after the war, the Soviet government tried, convicted and executed members of the Russian Liberation Army, the last in 1978. Many thanks for listening. Please visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.